Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today we're going to discuss the secret magical transformational power of recapitulation. Recapitulation is a truly amazing and wonderful way to heal, transcend, ascend into another higher dimension. This is absolutely critical spiritual work. You may have seen things like it in other avenues that are very similar when people talk about energy patterns and past traumas. But I have found that recapitulation may be on an entirely different level of healing and transcendence. If we can learn this technique together, we can heal so many things. We can heal the earth, the planet, everything. And more importantly, we can choose whether or not we want to reincarnate or move on to another level. Because the process of recapitulation, as it's explained by the Toltec Indians and Carlos Castaneda, is the key for us to move on from this incarnation without having to return to our body and continue in living out our karmic energy. In simple words, Recapitulation is a procedure of self-healing that is done by reliving the events of our past in such a way that we are able to restore our own being from the damage that many of those events left in us. This damage is usually expressed as repetitive emotional conflicts, the persistence of the routines of our personality that drain our vital energy comes from this energetic damage as well. Recapitulation is the medicine for that disease. In terms of energy, it could be said that recapitulation is the series of energetic procedures that restore our field of energy from the damage received in the past. The consequence of recapitulation is recovery of the state of completeness that we had at the moment of our birth. In practical terms, it implies recovering the freedom of choosing how to be and how to live, instead of endlessly repeating the exhausting internal routines established in our past. I have talked about recapitulation and discussed it as it's taught by Carlos Castaneda in the episode Carlos Castaneda understanding recapitulation. Recapitulation, as it was explained by Carlos Castaneda, is an ancient technique of retrieving energy, prevent energy healing energetic injuries. It's used in other contexts to refer to the hypothetical development of the embryo of an animal from fertilization to gestation, ontogeny, through stages representing successive stages in the evolution of the animal's remote ancestors or phylogeny. In this context, it is also referred to as the biogenetic law or embryological parallelism or the Meckel series law. This concept was formulated in the 1820s by Etienne Serres based on the work of Johann Friedrich Meckel. As applies here, recapitulation is a method, a self-directed discipline, a self-empowering technique that enables an individual to repair damage in their own energy bodies. This includes the damage and energy drain that comes from soul loss or soul fragmentation, mental complexes, attachments and addictions, attachments by entities living or deceased and from deliberate psychic attacks. That said, it's not a cure-all, rather it's a healing method or process. There are times when it is most effective when combined with other healing processes, such as shamanic soul retrieval, spirit releasement, traditional counseling. One big advantage of recapitulation is that it's practiced solo, and it's therefore empowering to the individual. Another advantage is that it's based on energy work rather than an analysis or talk therapy. It was described in the writings of Carlos Castaneda. His writings were popular in the 70s and 80s, and much of his narrative was derived from Toltec traditions and concepts. Victor Sanchez is another author who has studied this technique from its original sources, 
Sanchez's refinements and techniques, experiences, and perspectives are described in his book, The Toltec Path of Recapitulation, Healing Your Past to Free Your Soul. I read in that episode, From the Eagle's Gift, a little bit of what Castaneda was taught by Don Juan about recapitulation. There's just so much that we can learn from this process, and it's really an invaluable thing. The roots of recapitulation are lost in time. Legends and living practices among indigenous peoples, descendants of the ancient Toltecs, speak about the enormity of the knowledge developed by the ancient habitants of Tula and other Toltec populations. Different recapitulation-like experiences are still practiced among the descendants. The indigenous practice of telling one's life story to Grandfather Fire is a simple but deep way of recapitulation. It is also an example of how the awareness of the importance of our past experiences as an influence in our current life has been present in the human consciousness from a long time ago. In psychology and psychoanalysis, the observation of the past is seen as an important way to understand what the person in the present is, in spite of the enormous differences between psychoanalysis and recapitulation, it is possible to see how the awareness of the past is destiny and is a constant in most people of the world. In Webster's New World College Dictionary, the word recapitulate is defined as to repeat briefly, as in an outline. Listed as a synonym is repeat, which is a simple and clear approach to what the techniques of recapitulation are about. Repeating in the sense of reliving and summarizing in terms of doing it in a shorter time, looking for the basic structure, are actually part of the procedures that are the core of this technique. The work about the past and even the idea of reliving the past as a step in a healing process is of course present in many different therapeutic practices from bioenergetics to hypnosis, from body therapy to orthodox psychoanalysis and from primal therapy to the spiritual practices of different indigenous peoples. Nevertheless, the term recapitulation associated with a systematic practice to heal ourselves from the damages obtained in the past was introduced for the first time by Carlos Castaneda in his book, The Eagle's Gift, in 1982. In that book, Castaneda describes a very general procedure for recapitulation. Even though the theme is enticing, his description of the technique is too general, and what's more relevant for the readers interested in the practice is that his description does not provide the necessary background to apply those practices in the context of everyday life. The idea of restoring the energetic body was very appealing to Castaneda's readers, but though the recapitulation practices described in his books were quite attractive, they were difficult to apply because of the enormous distance between the strange world described by the apprentice of the sorcerer and the life of Castaneda's readers. Providing a definition for this is obviously not difficult. The point here is that we are dealing with something that is beyond the boundaries of the rational mind. Definitions cannot contain something so changing as the process of recapitulation. Basically, recapitulation is what our energetic body does in order to heal itself from the damage incurred in the past as a consequence of negative energetic interaction. To understand this, it seems to open our vision to the meaning of our existence as fields of energy, which we've discussed in previous episodes on the morphic field and you are a field. This version of us as a field is completely different from what we actually think of ourselves in the everyday world. According to Toltec knowledge, trying to understand our existence from the point of view of our ego and the rational mind results in a mostly confusing exercise where conflict between thought A and thought B is impossible to resolve. The Toltec knowledge offers a much deeper and practical approach to our true nature. We are children of the sun, which in terms of energy means we are fields of energy. According to this vision, everything that happens to all beings in the universe is related to their level of energy and to the kind of energetic interactions they have with the beings surrounding them. Humans are not the exception. Now, I became very fascinated with this concept. When you read in the books of Castaneda, 
as well as the Toltec readings, you learn that there are these unseen entities that exist and live on different realms and planes of existence, the astral realm and other realms. One place that you can find these entities is when you go to the hospital. Have you ever noticed when you go to the hospital, you have this certain creeping feeling and that's because there are entities that feed on fear. There are entities that feed on fear and hover in hospitals because that's literally the food that they eat. That's how they survive. There are also entities that exist within the astral realm and the etheric realms, as well as different levels of dimension that the soul travels through that eat from our memories of ourselves and the emotions of it. I have a belief that the afterlife is a program as well, that you go through a program where you meet a group that judges your life and goes through it. And then you're given a choice to go back and relive through the karmic lessons that you learn. We've heard that from different psychics and different revelations in the law of one material. That might all be a simple program that we run because we have not resolved what's happened in our past. You have so many memories that you're not even aware of. You have so many experiences that you've had, depending on how old you are. There are things that happen from ages one through five, from five to 10, from 10 to 15, from different various eras in your life that are deeply embedded in your body that you don't even know about, that are parts of your energetic field. And even more importantly, when we look at our entire lives, it's an energetic field. Remember, there is no time. There is all time happening at the same time. So when we have a significant event in our lives and we don't let it go, what happens is that event is taking our energy. And the only way for us to move through the gates into the greater afterlife beyond this realm of beings that eat our memories and our fears and our energies is for us to go through this process of recapitulating our energies. So we're bringing back the energies that we have for these different memories. And if we are purified, when we go through this simple process of reliving our lives, then we can move on to higher realms in such a powerful way. Imagine your energy field is a certain amount of energy that you can bring back and you have enough energy to move on. So I became very fascinated with this, knowing that I needed to understand and assimilate all these crazy memories I have from my past. Some I'm ashamed of, some I'm proud of, happy moments, sad moments, depressing moments. It's all very, very fascinating to me. When we talk about the energetic body, we're talking about something that is different from our ego or our egoic personality. It is different from the perceptions of ourselves as something that is located inside our head. It's even different from the physical body itself. The energetic body is bigger than our physical body, which means that it includes parts that we normally do not see, such as energy surrounding the physical body, which is known as the aura, feelings, and the dreaming body, the etheric body, the astral body, Ultimately, the energetic body is the one that feels, the one that connects itself with what is out there. It is the counterpart to the ego, which is basically connected to itself. The energetic body is the biggest of mysteries. It is not possible to determine where it starts and where it ends. We may live part of its endless possibilities, but we cannot deplete them. It is because of our energy body that we are simply another mystery in the middle of many, many mysteries. We have no bottom. To understand recapitulation, it is necessary to talk about the energetic body. Recapitulation is done by the energetic body, which includes all of our physical body, but is more than just that. The ultimate nature of all human interactions is that there are exchanges of energy, positive exchanges, negative exchanges, neutral exchanges. And I believe these exchanges are even happening through social media and digital reactions and experiences and different events that we have where we may not be interacting with someone else, but we're exchanging energy even through our phones. These exchanges lead to consequences. At the present, we are basically the result of these energetic exchanges. Energetic exchanges were printed in our energetic body and we live the way we live. We see the world. We see and we are what we are because of those exchanges and those energetic prints. 
I know at this point this explanation is probably too abstract and it's very difficult to talk about this subject without being overly abstract, mainly because we do not see how the energy is being moved and affected by our actions and interactions. There's some level of faith in doing this process because we don't see the way our energy is coming back to us when we do this process. So recapitulation is the natural process of energetic restoration of our energetic body from the damages that come from the past. This natural act is done by our body. It consists of bodily remembering and reliving the meaningful events of our lives in order to perform a healing process to recover the state of energetic completeness and balance that we had when we were born. Now, I started exploring recapitulation on my spiritual journey at the same time I was exploring revision with Neville Goddard. That's why you can find a meditation on the channel that is recapitulation and revision because I found them so congruous and so interlinked. I wanted to have a meditation with both, but really I should have separated those as I did later with a number of revision meditations. Recapitulation is its own process. It's hard for me to go and remember a past event if I'm revising it as it really happened because I'm also in my own mind as I understand the way that Neville Goddard talks about it. I'm taking that event and I'm making it real in which I have some variable flexibility with Neville Goddard's technique. Neville Goddard would say we go back and live past events and remember them differently as the way we wish they would have been. I believe that there are two levels to this process. The first level is recapitulation, to bring our energy back and then to revise it because we have the energy to revise. And I've found greater success in doing revision after doing recapitulation, particularly for events that have happened a long time in the past. But it's a natural process of energetic restoration of our energetic body from the damage that comes from the past it's a natural act done by our body. It consists of bodily remembering and reliving the meaningful events of our lives. It's a natural process. The body is naturally healing itself. A natural self-healing process that your body knows. That was one revelation that made it easier for me to do this, is that we already know how to recapitulate and accomplish this healing. It is our energetic body that actually knows how to recapitulate. By always staying in the ego, we do not know there is more to what we are. We are not the ego. We are a field of energy. While the ego is an illusion, the energetic body is much more real. It is what happens to our energetic body that determines our destiny and not all those explanations that our ego provides about itself through our talking mind. To be focused always on our ego and thinking we are the ego is not something concomitant to human existence. We've been trained by our culture to believe that all behaviors, routines, and repetitive, reactive ways of thinking about everything, include ourselves, is what we are. We think we are everything that is implied by the words I, me, and self. The ego is more than a very detailed description of what we think we are according to our personal history. It seems so real and so definitive because we have learned during our entire life to live as if the ego were the most real thing in the world. We're always acting in accordance with our ego. And by doing so, we are reinforcing the perception that our ego is real and the boss. By reinforcing the conviction that we are just that, the ego, we reinforce acting in accordance with the ego and on it goes endlessly. I have found that this is very similar to many different writings on the Kabbalah and the Kabbalic forms of energetic healing. The not doings or actions liberated by the process of recapitulation are meant to break the vicious cycle. Practicing the not doings of the personal self can drastically prove the unreality of the ego. When we stop acting in accordance with our personal history and the dictations of our personality ego. The ego scrambles and we can see that we are not the ego. We can see for the first time what it's like to be free. By denying everything that is outside the boundaries of the rational mind, we have denied half of ourselves. The indigenous Toltec people of Mexico did not make that mistake. They knew that we are double beings. They knew about the double nature of the world. That's why they call the world 
Omeokon or the place of duality. That is why they give a name for each side of the world and each side of the duality we are. They named our rational side Tonal and our mysterious side Nagual, the side of the silent knowledge. Vadim Zeeland mentions Toltec writing as well in Reality Transurfing, and there is an implication given in that material, which is also channeled, that the Toltec knowledge comes directly from Atlantis and perhaps other galactic civilizations, even though it is ancient knowledge in our case through indigenous peoples. The process of recapitulation involves the remembering of past events. But this remembering is not like the normal mental recalling we continually engage in during everyday life. While normal memory is basically thinking, body memory is closer to feeling. It is a process of reliving, which in one way is likely going back to restore what was wrong. This does not mean that we can change the past. What we can change are the consequences that result from the past and the way these consequences are affecting our present life, much like revision. Actually, normal memory and recapitulation are so different that they each give us a completely different report of what our life has been. This is one of the reasons to call the memories that we get through recapitulation the memories of the other self. Normal memory is a speech we have been telling ourselves through our whole life. It is the interpretation and explanation we have been giving ourselves and others about what has happened in our life. Without being aware, those explanations have been changing all the time to suit our ego, that is the function of our normal memory, to support and justify what we are in terms of the ego. What I see a lot in recapitulation and what I experienced in my own life is that the things I thought were real in my past were actually completely different. They were completely myths that my ego had been telling myself and that's where the healing began. There were things I found in this subtle process of recapitulation that allowed to bring up things that were in my subconscious that I was not aware of. I had misremembered things and pushed things down so deep I could not remember them. When we finally face our real past, it can lead to surprising discoveries. Perhaps you learn you are not the victim but the victimizer. Or maybe after a life pretending you've always cared about somebody or something, you discover while recapitulating that you have not cared at all about that person or situation. The opposite is also common. Perhaps you spent your life pretending you did not love or care for your father only to discover at the moment of his death or through recapitulation that you've always deeply loved him. Ordinary memory just doesn't give us a real report of what our life has been. That is the story of the ego. The real story of what we are is the story of our energetic body. When your energetic body tells its story, what you see is different from the ego's version. It is not based on the ego's interpretation of what was pleasant or unpleasant, but is founded on what we and others have done to our energetic body and the subsequent benefits or wounds we have received. The important part is that through the act of remembering, our energetic body is able to take our awareness back to the event so that we have a second chance to face the situation in a different manner. It's kind of like if you were to scratch yourself or cause some injury on your skin and you didn't let it heal, you kept on ripping it open and never letting the wound heal, what would happen? It would just continually get worse and become a major problem to your system. That's kind of what happens to our energetic body. Because of our devotion to the defense of the ego at all times, our energy wasting routines block the natural process of self-healing, making the damage like black holes in our field of permanent energy portal opens up to that time and place and our energy just gets sucked into that memory that we have. Now the actual technique of recapitulation is quite interesting. If you read the teachings from Carlos Castaneda in The Eagle's Gift as well as Victor Sanchez, they do something called the recapitulation box. The idea is that you force the body to remember so that you serve like a travel guide. And the way they would do it is a wooden box in which to recapitulate is built and you do certain kinds of breathing and then you enter into this wooden box and then you go through a process of 
remembering these events on this list that you make you can start with and then you do an exercise to fix the energetic damage generated from that event now I have found you don't necessarily need to use a wooden box if you can work in complete darkness with a mask I personally conducted my recapitulation in doing a floating tank if you can sit in a floating tank in the darkness it's a fantastic way to do this technique because you don't really feel your body and if you make it that intention you can actually do a recapitulation quite well but you can also do it just in the dark laying down but the box is very effective that's what Carlos Castaneda was advised by Don Juan to do the recapitulation so you start off and you start to remember your entire life you go through and start making lists of what has happened in your life you start through different areas and eras and periods of time you start from zero to one and it's amazing you'll start to get little hints of memory of things you don't think that you can remember and then you go in and there are procedures that allow you to go through this on a body level to remember what is happening in your body the process is you have breathing techniques and you have commands there's a ritual that's involved and as you do this you go through your entire life and when you heal these events that occurred in your life your energy body becomes whole and healed so the first important step is to make the list so that you can have a simple idea of what kind of events are the ones you need to recapitulate the most start with events during which you made promises that change your life events during which your vision about sex and affection was created or modified events during which you resigned or lost in any manner something that was an authentic expression of yourself events during which your personal repetitive fears were implanted events with painful emotional interactions events of great joy which are your hidden memory about happiness and how to achieve it events involving your sexual experiences events involving the meaningful relationships of your life events about which you feel shame simply in remembering them events related to the, the things that you've been hiding from others eyes events in which you can find parts of yourself that you normally think are completely lost events involving pain for the loss of somebody that you loved events involving joy from loving others events during which the great spirit made a gesture to you events during which you let your spirit express itself with no restraints events during which you betrayed yourself or others this list of examples could continue endlessly I'm hoping that you get the general idea of what you're looking for these are just a handful and they give you an idea of what could be a significant event in terms of energy how are you going to recognize those events you do not know are significant and perhaps the number of events may seem too large where are you going to find the time to recall and recapitulate so many events to solve that first problem what we do is try to include all the events that come to our mind and seem to be significant in any way aside from the important ones now what do I mean when I say significant aside from the important ones basically important events are the ones we already consider important like the ones presented in the list of examples that I just gave significant events are those that are not quite as important but could have some significance for instance let us imagine this when I was seven years old my uncle took me with him to buy groceries and on the way to the store we came upon a fair where we stopped for a while it was a nice day the first time I had gone somewhere with my uncle and just based on the facts this was not an important event in my life nevertheless I'm going to include it on my list as a significant event because it comes to mind as something I remember about my uncle on the other hand I would not list as separate events my ride on the merry-go-round and when we bought popcorn nor would I include on my list when we came back home and I ate my dinner cookies and milk I would not put these small events on my list unless something really special for me happened during them certainly there is not anything like a precise line separating the important events from the small insignificant ones it is an arbitrary selection 
that we make based on our own feelings and discernment. Even if it seems confusing, the fact is that once we've started the work, we will find the sense of how to do it. There's no way to say a final word in terms of this event being right or that being wrong. We're talking about a process. Once we engage in it, things will tend to flow naturally. Make a list of relatives, friends, partners, people that you've had sex with, companions in school, workmates, people related to your spiritual quest, people related to the world of music if you're a musician, or writing if you're a writer. The common theme on your list is people because of your energetic stories, a story related to those people. There are meaningful events that may not be connected to the presence of someone else, events that you originate or that happen to you when you're alone. Maybe you've already guessed that there is no way to be alone because there are always other fields of energy surrounding us. This is not significant from the point of view of the average person, but is quite important from this Toltec point of view. If you have a close relationship with nature, you may have had very important events of interaction with a mountain or a river or the ocean. Even if you never considered nature to be important in your life, you've been interacting with fields of energy of the natural world all the time. So it is the convenient that you include two more subtle areas, events that happen while being alone, events of interaction with non-human fields of energy. Write the names of the people related to each list area, organize them into a big list, write down all the events that come to you. Make this list as long as you can in your journal. Because of its map-like quality, we start to get more and more things that we weren't thinking about as we make this list. Copy your age stages list so you make a list that's 5 through 10, 10 through 15. Attach your list to a wall. Stand back a few steps. See what the color is. What color has your life been? In which stages of your life have you been living in a more energetic way? If you look at the different stages of life, notice the dark events. Check to see if they are similar or different. Focus on the darkest area and try to track back to the origin of those moments of darkness. Be aware that the origin may be a long time ago. So first of all, at the beginning of the entire process, when you create for your list for the first time, in the time just before you enter into your box or your meditation or into the darkness or the float tank, whatever it is that can allow you to completely escape from the outside world, the list is going to be your daily guide that will help you to choose which events or which parts of your life you're going to recapitulate in that specific session. Now you can't bring a paper into a float tank but you can bring it into the box. But the point is you have this list. You're not going to be looking at it as you recapitulate. Following your list, the next thing is to set up your area for the recapitulation. I know that a box seems scary. I personally found it to be too claustrophobic, but that's the technique that they recommend. What you want to do is create a special atmosphere. That's why they initially recommended creating a box. It creates a ritual element that focuses your attention on the task. So create a place that's very, very secretive and private. Maybe it's away from your bed. Maybe it's a room where you can lay down on the floor in the darkness. Make it special so that it's a special place for you to bring up these memories. Everybody is different. So the energetic body is a little bit compressed in the box and the effect of the compression helps the body to remember. So you can sometimes put a blanket around yourself if you don't want to use the box. The box in Toltec traditions is symbolic. It's a representation of how we are trapped in our personal history. It's very useful in the ritual of recapitulation to put yourself in a box or an enclosed area Close the space in darkness in whatever element that you can do. But most people report that you can do this outside of the box if you use your imagination properly and compress your energy field into the box and really focus your attention on your energetic body. 
The box that Victor Sanchez recommends is literally like a coffin. It's just a square box that's laid down on the ground that you build yourself. And so I'm not a big believer in having to use the box or the feeling of the box. For instance, my wife would never do that process in a box because she's claustrophobic. She won't even do the float tank. But I believe that you can still get the effects if you do it in the right way. Now you start this process once you are in your special area and you start breathing. You look straight ahead and expel all the air in your lungs. Turn your head to face to the right. Then, while you turn your head to face left, inhale, coordinating your inhalation with the movement so that by the time you are facing fully to the left, your lungs and abdomen are full. Move your head to face straight ahead again, holding your breath, and exhale when you are looking straight ahead again, just as you did at the beginning. Repeat these steps and continue breathing this process. They recommend doing it for five to 10 minutes. You can also begin by facing straight ahead and inhaling while you hold your breath with your lungs and abdomen full of air, turn your head to the left. Then while you turn your head to face the right, exhale slowly, coordinating your exhalation with the movement so that by the time you're facing fully to the right, your lungs are empty. Now with no air, turn your head to face straight ahead, then start the whole process again, continuing for as long as you need to. That general breathing process is used by most recapitulators. Another form of breathing that you can continue doing either after this or as a replacement if you find that hard is you simply look straight ahead. Facing straight ahead with your head tilted close to your right shoulder, then begin to make a slow circular movement upward toward your left sh shoulder. And while you do this, you inhale through the nose upward toward your left shoulder while you do this and you inhale through your nose. Once you get to your left shoulder without stopping, you continue your circular movement. These techniques are including bodily movement for a reason, because it gets your energy body aligned with your breathing and you get into that body memory. So you start this particular breathing process and you move your head in one of these different ways. And then you begin to see the event. You're going to see the event as you, if you were in a theater. On the screen of your mind, you're watching a movie. The script of the movie is what happened during the event you've chosen to recapitulate. The main actor of the movie is you. You are seeing yourself in that movie. You are seeing your past. And while you watch, you try to use your memory in a different way. Pay attention to the details, the surrounding, the objects. The main thing is to direct attention to the feelings inside the actors. See their looks and try to feel their hidden thoughts. What is happening on the surface? What is going on inside them? See your own feelings. Once you have seen the whole movie, then you go to the next step, which is reliving the event. Now the story is going to be played again, but this time you're inside the event. You're not watching it from the movie. You do not see yourself. You see only the people who were with you in that moment. You are living the present and you are doing the same thing you are doing in the actual event you are speaking the same words you are having the same thoughts you are feeling the same feelings of that time it is the here and now in order to relive and not just remember you should act the event within the limitations of the box space or the area that you're in you move your body a little bit just to feel more of what you are living say the words you said Say even what you didn't say in the actual event, but what was present in your feelings and thoughts. Don't analyze what's going on. You are there living and feeling, and there is no time or space for anything else other than what you are living and feeling. The main goal is to pass from the space of remembering to the space of reliving. Depending on how naturally this process takes, you may need to do some intensification practices to trigger the bodily process of reliving. This is one of the most crucial moments in the whole process. Reliving past events is not easy, but it is crucial that you learn how to do it at the outset. Otherwise, you're going to be hitting the same obstacle again and again. The main problem is that it's difficult to try to do something at the same time your mind is telling you that it is not possible. In other words, you want to relive, but you feel stupid trying to do something that you think is impossible. 
That's the crucial point. In order to get to the other side where the impossible is possible, you should overcome the common perception that is stopping you. How do you do this? Well, there are techniques, but you can inevitably do it by simple intent. One of the common ways in which an internal may block your advancement is the feeling of resistance to acting in a ridiculous way. Talk, say the names, move your body, do intense breathing, exaggerate. One of the simplest techniques to connect with the feelings and reliving is exaggerating what you are doing, feeling or saying. If you want to connect with fear but you don't think you can, then pretend that you're acting but exaggerate, which means you're going to act or express with even more intensity than the actual event. You can cry, you can shout, sing, laugh, growl, moan, groan, do anything that may help you to stop thinking and start feeling. This is the moment to leave behind the ever-present controlling mind. You're going to use your previous intensification as much as you need them. They're tools. The resistance to reliving could be seen like a dam. Once it gives way, what was behind it flows. The dam could be made of fear to change, fear to live again. The pain of the past is also a common reason for resisting. Some people say, I don't want to pass through that suffering again. I don't know if I would be able to bear it. This is understandable when people are dealing with recapitulating a deeply painful event. I've been trying to leave that pain behind. Why should I go back to that suffering again? They say. The point is that if you feel so much fear and pain simply from thinking about the event, then the pain has not gone. It is still damaging your energy body. It is still with you. If you do not face it now, once and for all, that pain will be after you the rest of your life. The more you try to escape from it, the more it will follow you. That is why recapitulating the event that hurt you is so necessary. Even if we should pass through some pain, the reason for going back there is not just for the sake of suffering, but instead to heal ourselves of that pain. Recapitulation is a continual challenge. As soon as you have succeeded in the challenge of going back and reliving, you'll be facing the next challenge, detaching yourself from the pain and having the capacity and courage to jump out of the event and start the healing which is the next step, which is energetic restoration. In this step, you're going to see the event for a third time to start the healing. In a similar way to what you did in earlier steps, you will see the event from outside in the movie. The movie again will be replayed in front of your eyes, and this time you'll be detached, like a spectator, like a neutral observer, but your role will not be passive. Now you are the healer, a cold and focused healer. There is no sorrow in you, there is no self-pity. There is only will and the power to heal. In order to heal the event, once again, you're going to use the special breathing technique that we talked about. If you're seeing an event in which you lost energy, you're going to recover it by using the breathing technique. Simply rotating your head from left to right, breathing in and out, using that technique as I described earlier. If you have your own breathing technique, then try it. But moving the head is what they recommend. If you're seeing yourself in an event in which you're impregnated with other people's energy, or if you want to release a promise you've been carrying since that event, then use the breathing technique. Release what should not remain in you. I believe you can also do the fire breathing technique. There are a number of different breathing techniques, but what the breath does, it allows for the negative energy to be released. If you're seeing an event which you lost energy and made negative energetic command, use the breathing technique. It's a magical act. It keeps us alive. And while you use the appropriate breaths, you should use your intent to recover your energy or release what must be let go. This means that there is no question about what you're doing. You just do it. The power of using your will to heal your energetic body comes from a region of your other self that is called the place of no pity. This is a cold and silent space where there are no thoughts, doubts, or self-pity. To accomplish the healing, you must go back to the experience that needs to be healed. When the moment arrives, be prepared to jump out of the event and start the healing no matter how intense your reliving is. 
Do not leave the event before you get to the core of the feelings you felt in that event. Stay for a few minutes and then, when you have touched the bottom, get out of there, jump and start the healing. Be prepared means knowing in advance that sometimes it is not easy to jump out of the event. It seems strange, but it is common. The more painful are the ones that are more difficult to leave because sometimes the entire structure of our ego has been built upon these critical experiences. Many people see themselves this way. I am the one who suffered the pain. I am the man or woman who carries this wound. The hidden fear of our ego could be expressed this way. If you take away this wound, which has given meaning to my life, who am I going to be then? What am I going to be? The resistance to change is more prevalent than we would imagine. It is related to our fear of losing the meaning that our past gives us. Maybe it's not a nice past, but it is what nourishes and sustains our ego. Because of this, the ego is deeply attached to it. And we should be ready to overcome the attachment so we can be free and discover that there is much more inside us than the limited possibilities of the ego and its personal history. I have seen this resistance to getting free from the attachment to painful events in coaching sessions. I've seen people who first resisted entering into the experience of reliving events of intense emotional pain. And then when they finally were able to enter into the reliving, did not want to get out. You are simply leaving that experience. You are jumping out of it. It's a symbolic act. You are taking away the body memory of it. And in that process, the energy comes back to you. You can even tell yourself, it's time to heal. And you jump. Once you've completed the healing for that event, using the breathing technique, then you change your attention and focus on the decision making. It's important to note that the decision making starts in the rational mind but should get to the energetic body. This means your decision making is going to take place at two levels. One level is your mind. You think and even state out loud your decision, which is that you are deciding to change in your life and in your being. The other level is the energetic command that will replace the former energetic command that was controlling your life until the time when you started to recapitulate. You can say from this moment on, I will not hide my feelings anymore, whatever it takes. I will express my feelings whenever I need to. Fear is not going to stop me. You can say that. You are making the decision to heal. I believe the eighth step is to revise it, to imagine the experience differently, to go in and imagine yourself doing the things that you wanted to do in that event. I believe that when you combine this particular element into the action, it changes the timeline that you are on. It has an energetic signature in the quantum field that helps to change what you experienced. You go through the different portions of your life and you recapitulate them. You recapitulate the experience. You go in, you experience it energetically, you heal it, and then you revise it. And then you simply move on and you enter into your master self, getting better and better at transmuting those past memories healing the energetic signature, recapitulating it, and moving on. And the more and more you do this work, it may take you months, years, decades, based on how older you are and how intense the many memories that you have. The more you do it, the more energy you have in your life, the greater that you feel. I found that I was able to heal my physical body by doing this process. The real thing that's amazing about this experience for me personally is the memories that you don't have in your conscious level that start to come up. For instance, I might start remembering a previous experience with my mother, eating breakfast with my mother. And then I started to remember all the little things about that energetic relationship with my mother, the way that she stomped down the stairs, the way that she would sit down at the table. Everybody got really silent because my mother, when she came down in the morning, would get really grumpy or angry. And so we sort of lived on eggshells waiting for her particular response in that morning. I recognized her unconscious behavior. I could hear her crunching her cereal and gulping down her water. And the feelings that I had in my body as I brought this memory up, these are things I don't remember or think about. The effect of this is I could remove this energetic pattern. This created a pattern in my life so that 
I was sensitive to the emotions of other people because I had walked on eggshells with my mother. So in other relationships, I'd be super sensitive to the emotions of other people, overly so. So I'd be, are you mad? Are you angry right now? What's going on? Because I always lived on an eggshell worrying about what was going to happen with my mom. And as a result, I changed the way I was reacting because I had this deep fear of my mother getting angry. And I transposed that into other relationships. Each time I go through a recapitulation, I'm learning about an energetic pattern that legitimately applies to the way I act in my present day. It affects the way I react. It shows me why I'm getting angry in certain experiences. You ever get angry out of the blue and you don't know why? And then you go back and say, oh, it's because I had this experience when I was six years old and I had to fight back or I had to lash out and that anger protected me. So then you bring up this anger as a protection mechanism. When you come to your pure self and you release your past and you make it perfect, then you are on your divine timeline where all things are perfect. You're pulling up the stakes from that other outdated vibrational timeline and you enter into a new timeline and recapitulation is the secret way of shifting into that perfect parallel reality because I have found that oftentimes we are stuck in the reality we're in because we're stuck in our past. And by doing the work of recapitulation, you free yourself to be that multidimensional being that you truly are. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution.